is up one of the finest Pixar films ever created, or deflated like a balloon. It popped. All right, let's go find out at DPR. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Sheesh, I can't do everything right. Oh, well, that's good, though. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Disney Plus Reviewer at DPR. Now we're going to review one of my finest, probably one of the best Pixar films I've ever seen in my life. A guy who was a little boy watched the old movie news thing that he did in those days. Watch about this guy named Charles Muntz. He is like a venture explorer that he enjoyed for many years. Unfortunately, something happened. When they tried when he tried to find that, that bird from South America, it turned out to be a fraud. So they remove him out of the the Explorers Club. And now he's about to um retaliate that by going back to South America and find it. And guess what? They don't know what happened to him. It's been many, many years and they still haven't he still haven't found it. So, that's all I can say about this film. Uh, but I will tell you a little more about the story. So, let's do it. Let's go to, we'll talk about the story. We have a tale of adventure, an adventure that's out there. An elderly man world named Carl Fredrickson, who is going to travel to South America to Paradise Falls, as promised to his late wife, Ellie. While his adventure going, he met a wilderness explorer named Russell, who wants to help him out, but... He's a stowaway to, to his house, so he goes to Carl's journey. Plus, they met a dog who was trained and talked from his voice caller named Doug, which is cute and funny at the same time. Voice by Bob Pearson for that one, which I will talk about the casting on the name. Um, and a wild bird named Kevin. Plus, he met his venture idol, Charles Muntz, the other one, who have evil sister plans to capture the bird. Will Carl be the hero he never knew? Will Russell keep Kevin to be free. Will Doug be outlaw? Well, up for the challenge for best movie ever. And will Charles Muntz um, take his evil deeds and try and say, here you go, I found the bird finally. Well, we'll have to find out about that, huh? Will we? <laughs> uh, oh man, this is a big treat for me. Oh, how I love this film. The story here is, um, it's my boggling because I never see anything like this before you have an elderly guy which you're thinking hmm how is this going to work have an elderly guy in this one voice voiced by the great ed asner god bless you boy um and then we have uh christopher Plummer, which also he's passed too um voice um charles Muntz for that one and it's like wow you guys got two big actors in movie and tv TV together, and now we have it became one of the finest movies of all time. And I gotta say, this is absolutely one of the best films of all time. I never have eight issues with this one, which we'll do with pros and cons a little bit later for that one. So, all I gotta say is that this is a wild adventure that I thought is like, hmm, is this gonna work? Oh, baby. It works. It really, really works. Seeing this guy who wants to go adventure with his wife. If you check on the oh, let me tell you, one of the best opening sequences for film history, having two oh, two people, a boy and a girl, love each other by in a weird but a nice way because it seems their friendship has grown and they married they went through a lot um they tried to get to paradise falls it didn't work out very well uh, unfortunately his wife um didn't make it she lost the will, will to live which actually i'm not sure if that is the case i haven't read mostly on the wikipedia for that one but i'm thinking that's probably what happened for that is um yeah, Ellie um, probably lost the will to live, even though she 
did the best she can there. She can't, you can't even get a child. That's even sad, too. The thing is, though, those two did not voice act in that open sequence. It's the music from Michael Ciccino. Let me tell you, one of the best scores in his career since he did with um, so many other films, including Incredibles 1 and 2. I got to say that this is absolutely a gorgeous piece of history right here for Pixar. I never seen anything like this before. This is the the mind the minds of doing Toy Story, Finding Nemo, uh, Cars, Incredibles, you name it. Well, even though even though Bradbury was a part of it for this video, but you might as well be because this is another example of how you do films right. That's why you need to have a good story, have a nice script for these voice actors to do these characters and show how much they can lift up. Not only lift up for the story part, but lift up to bring the story from one scene to another. And all I gotta say is, wow. I thought Monsters, Inc. was is impressive for Pete Doctor, but wow. With this film here, it makes me so happy to see more good films like this get well-deserved accolades. Yeah, which I will d discuss it to you guys in a, in a few in a few minutes. So yeah, seeing these characters, especially uh, we got Carl right there, we got Russell right there, we got Doug the talking dog Kara on that one. Which oh, just letting you know, guys, uh, as a tiny little trivia, um, the talking dog, um, uh, character for Disney World was removed. I have no idea why they removed that. I thought it's a great idea to do that, but I hope they I hope he comes back because it's nice to see he and he's talk, talking to that and talking with um uh, us guests. It is so cute and fun. I I enjoy how they do that. I hope they do get those back because we need to get stuff like that back. So, all right, let's continue the tale for this one. So yeah, these characters, even they don't have like too many of them. Which is okay because, um, yeah, it goes to show you that they know what they're doing with this story. And I'm glad they don't have to have many characters in order to enjoy a film. It's just like, um, just like Wally. -E. Wally -E has not very many characters, mostly it's robots, um, less voice acting. Ben Bird, um, the sound editor. Uh, became the voice of some other uh, two bots and do the sound editing on the whole thing. That's going to show you that's how classic um, storytelling is. So, now let's go talk about the cast. Okay, so we have Ed Asner voicing Carl Frankerson. He's an elderly widower um, and retired balloon salesman. Um, Dr. Rivera know Asner's television alter ego will grant and have been helpful in writing for Carl because it would guide them in a balanced, likable, and unlikable aspects. Of the country uh, character. The appearance of Carl was designed to resemble Spencer Tracy as he appeared in his final film. Oh, that's. Oh, it's my final guess who's coming to there. Oh, that is so not. Oh, that's a good trivia right there. I didn't know they did this something like that. When they met Asner and presented him with a model of his character, he joked, I don't look anything like that. They tell his dialogue for him with short sentences and more consonants, which cemented the notion that Carl Pulse Ellie is a disgruntled bear that's been poked away <laughs> during hibernation. <laughs> Wow, I didn't know he said something that. That's funny. Then we got Jordan uh, Nakadai uh, as Russell. He's a 13-year-old wilderness explorer. Though most of the film, he makes several comments to Carl that suggest that Russell's father and mother are separated or divorced. They didn't say anything about that. But it goes to the notion that the dad's not there. So he's probably, yeah, it's probably divorced, I'm guessing. I think that's probably what happened there. And then we got Christopher Plummer as Charles Muntz, an elderly explorer and Charles item. The name of his airship, the Spirit Adventure, may have been inspired by Charles Lindbergh's airplane, Spirit of St. Louis, which is actually a pretty cool idea, doing that one. In the interviews for that, Pete Doctor mentioned Howard Hughes in Real Life Adventure of Lindbergh and Percy Fawcett in Inspirations for Muntz, which is actually a good idea. Reviewers know that his resemblance to... <laughs> he does a... Oh yeah, he does look like Kirk Douglas. 
Hey, hey, Kirk Douglas, I didn't know you were in that film. Ah, huh, interesting. <laughs> and then, um, then we have Bob Pearson as Doug. We know Bob Pearson. He's been doing like voice acting, screenwriting, producing, and all that stuff there. Yeah, he does a lot of stuff. And it's very nice to see him as a funny character as Doug. Oh my gosh. He's a talking golden retriever, as I mentioned. He would voice Doug when he rose to, I just met, I have just met you, and I love you. Which was based on what a child told him when he was a camp counselor in the 80s. <gasps> he is a camp counselor? Hmm, what a decent voice wasn't there. Anyway, um, the DVD release of the film features a short uh, called Doug's Special Mention, which also follows Doug just before his first meeting with Carl and Russell. Previously appeared in Ratatouille as a shadow on a wall that barked at Remy. Oh, that does look familiar. Hey, see, I told you, maybe the idea of a Brad Bird. Hey, I didn't know Brad Bird's part. <laughs> I didn't know Doug, Doug right there. It's like, wow. I didn't know he would be in that one. That is actually pretty cool to see that um having like these Easter eggs on each Pixar film. It's actually pretty cool. I do enjoy that idea. So, um, so, um, Pete Doctor, who's directing it, and also co screenwriting for Pete Doctor and also Bob Pearson. So, yeah, those two got the right idea to not only balance of different elements of the story, but um, showing that elderly guy lit, got his house lift up in the air, never seen that ever happen before, flying to Paradise Falls as promised to his um, beloved. Go through so much problems in order to get to his goal <laughs> in a humor way. And it goes to show you that that is how this film needs to be. This film needs to be balanced. It needs to balance all emotion and depth. Humor. Um, also, yeah, let's see. I'll, let's see. Now, yeah, and also adventure as well. Because it, it needs to be. It needs to have all those elements together. So, this would be like the idea of how Pixar films are. My fa my favorite of the company. It's even though I like Walt Disney Animation Studios in most of their films, and they do have some problems with their films there. But it seems that Pixar is a little above Animation Studios for Disney because they know how to balance storytelling. They do. They know how to balance storytelling for that one, and that's why I really like how Pixar became my favorite movie company to to inspire. Especially when I try to um, go see almost every Pixar film. If there was a Pixar film coming, it's like, yeah, I need to go see it. I need to go see it. Every Pixar film I love, including Inside Out 2, which I thought that is one of the best sequels i ever seen. And it goes to show you that they know how they're doing for storytelling. The thing is that I, let's see, even though like the good dinosaur may not be the best of the thing, but I still enjoy it. Same with Cars 2. Which we'll be reviewing that pretty, pretty soon. Yeah, I was going to give like a little grade for that one. But I'm not going to because I enjoyed that movie as much as I enjoyed 1 and 3. Yeah, but I will tell you about the um, what I felt about that one uh, later on. But I figured I just wanted to mention that this is the reason why I really enjoy movies. Especially Pixar movies. These guys... Even if they do like a sequel or a prequel of a movie, it seems to me that they know what they're doing. And also, just so you know, on the Rotten Tomatoes, there's only one Rotten movie in the entire almost 30 films of Pixar. One. Only one. And that's Cars 2 with 40%. But Walt Disney Animation Studios, they got seven or eight released that have um rot tomatoes right there so yeah that goes to show you that um it's not because of the critical thing right there but at least for story wise in my opinion this is why i love pixar more they need they need to keep the pixar trend going as long as they do their best even if it's sequels or they're trying to do a different ip later as long as they keep get fresh ideas and keep exploring um the right ideas to in order to grow then i'm going to be there to review it 
because I want to try to re I'm gonna review every Pixar film, including Inside Out 2. I'm going to do the best I can try to review all of them. That way, I can try to get close to it, and then bingo, we're going to go. So, yeah, all I got to say is that this film, with so much inspiration to me, Especially when they go to like Venezuela to see the inspiration for South America and stuff like that. It goes to show you that these are the best ideas you see in cinema. I really, really enjoy these types of films. They need to continue continue on of doing storytelling, animation, voice work. Yeah, you name it. They did a great job with this one. And that's why I always enjoy this one. Now, before we do the pros and cons, we need to talk with a little trivia. As I already did a trivia about Asmin and other characters there. Yeah, there's actually um, other characters in their voices, but I, have, but I haven't got to them, and that's okay, though. I just want to get to the port, the ported ones there. Yeah, Kevin has speak in different um, tones. Yeah, but it's not the voice like the voice actor, though. I wonder if Michael Winslow will do that. Anyway, let's get to it. All right, so just so you know, this one is the first film presented in 3D, which is cool. National Board of Review and American Film is to name it one of the best, one of the top 10 films of 2009. They got probably one of the best opening sequences in, in cinematic history. And it shows, so it's like I said, they go through the life of two kids, two adults, to a couple, and even death. They keep they keep going, and that's why we that's why I love that opening sequence stuff. Also, they record one of the greatest animated films of the twenty first century and of all time. And when we did it, it's true. This is the second of the three animated films ever to receive a nomination for a Academy Award for Best Picture after Beauty and the Beast and before Toy Story three. So yeah, and also with Michael Cicchino's um music. Oh my gosh, that's just it's it's just. Ugh, I can't express so much love for this film. They've done so much for me to see this film grows to me. Actually, I watched this film at least 20 times, and I can't stop watching it. It's because it's so how damn good this film is. And this is why I really enjoyed this, this film. So, continue, got, continue Pixar. Please do. I really like to see you keep doing it for that one there. So, okay, so let's do the pros and cons right now. Okay, um, let's do the cons first. This is the easiest cons ever. <laughs> Big, fat, zero. There's nothing wrong with this film. Because it's an art Pixar classic. Balance of humor, adventure, or emotional depth. Michael Chino's best scores um, since his previous works. Beautiful animation. Excellent voice work, including Asner, Nagai, um, Pearson, and Plummer. And probably one of the best opening sequences of all time. With all mix all together, and with the way they did this, and especially if you see the cinema score, which is A plus, and also Rotten Tomatoes ninety eight percent certified fresh, I'm gonna give this one A plus. There is nothing wrong with this film. This is a pure joy for all family family members to watch. Even if you're not a Disney fan. You need to appreciate this movie because having an elderly person to go through life trying to see what I'm going to do now. I don't want to go be in a retirement nursing home and stuff like that. So I rather just go adventure. So he did. And let me tell you, that is one of the best ideas in cinematic history. Please go see this film. It's on Disney Plus. Even though I watched the 4K version of it, it looks phenomenal. So, yeah, I recommend go check that movie out. Well, I hope you enjoyed this review as much as I do. Um, yeah, if you like this, um, yeah, give a thumbs up. It's always nice to have a thumbs up. Um, any ideas um, plus um, comments of the movie, what's your favorite voice actor, music score person, and stuff like that, put the comments below. Subscribe to this channel. And press the notification button so you see live videos like this. Thank you everyone for watching. I'm grateful to have you here. 
yeah, make sure you share this video too, because that would be a good idea so that can help me grow and try to get to um 100,000 uh, subscribers. That's my that's my biggest goal I'm going to go for. Go for the silver plaque, man. Go to the silver plaque. Hopefully, one of these days. And when it does, it's like, thank you guys. This is not for me. This is for you. That's what I'm going to say about that. I can't wait for to do that video one of these days when I do get that. So, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next review. And I'll see you real soon.